Hello, I'm Flo. And I'm Eddie. And we're here again uh, in Hollywood, and we want to say hello to you all. From the Tropicana Hotel, some would say one of the schleziest places in Hollywood. To, to live or stay at for even one night. It's $12 a night. The pool has little things I swimming in it. I can smell the onions at Duke's Cafe next door. However, but what we have in waiting for us is one of the most interesting and uh, unusual interviews I think you'll find anywhere. An eccentric pop singer who I, I think you'll get a rare insight to in this very privileged interview. He uh, earns millions of dollars and yet chooses to live in this... Uh, well, why don't we show him? Why don't we just show you? Live. We're one going back is worth, to you know. uh, interview Tom Waits now, and now we're going to take you and show you Tom, Tom Waits. Waits. He's got to be here. The car's here. That's not going anywhere. He's home. Sounds like he's home. He is listening to something hip. <laughs> this car is certainly dead. He's here. Bill collectors. The Jet Magazine. <laughs> 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 Hi. Hi, hey, it's Flo and Eddie. Oh, All right. Hold it right there. <laughs> you must have thought we were the Bee Gees. <laughs> we're okay. I'm clean, Joe. Clean. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey. Nice place. Oh. Don't make no bad moves. I see you let the servants go for the weekend. <laughs> I don't live this way. Yes. Because, I mean, I'm just basically cheap. <laughs> do you hate leaving this place when you go out on a tour? I mean, do you feel like I'm leaving home and I'm... Ah, I enjoy returning. I've been, I just got back from Japan uh, a couple of days ago. So, uh, How so does it they, go over there for you? Oh, they, frankly, they went berserk. I mean, um, I was there a year ago. It's kind of like playing in Iowa a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. Shorter don't, Iowa. They don't speak English. You know. <laughs> so, it takes a while, and, and, but I found it. It was it was good for for me as an entertainer because I would I'd do more pantomime on stage. Uh, anything to get them to to, to laugh or, or you, know, you, have, you have to meet them more than halfway because of the language problem. So. I come on stage with like a broken umbrella or anything to, you know, to, to help them uh, uh, help them understand what I'm trying to tell them. You know? And they do get it. I mean, they get it. I they mean, get they get it here. You know? Yeah, you're you're a swinging bachelor type, right? You hit the road as well, a look around you. <laughs> I see this atmosphere now. <laughs> now, in Japan, now certainly you must meet these gorgeous oriental ladies that are willing to spend an evening with this mysterious visitor from the west. Right? Or do they all want to sit in your room and watch television? <laughs> very timid over there. Really? Yeah, they don't make the first move. Very shy and uh, very very gentle people. What's a girl in Hollywood, then? I mean, what's she like? Oh, you know, they, they cross their sevens and say chow. They go to Palm Springs. They drive Porsches with tennis rackets in the back seat. You know? Whether they, they play or they not. They proxide their mustaches and shit. You it's, can't handle that? I you know. You live in it. I mean, you come here to live in the midst of this glamour. Yeah. Well, I feel more like an inmate here, actually. <laughs> Hey, you're doing a film score, right? For, um... Not a score, but a couple of songs. A couple of songs for Paradise Alley. Paradise Alley, yeah. Mm. What, what is that exactly? It's that a story about three Italian brothers in the Hell's Kitchen in New York in the late 40s. It's, it's a beautiful story. It's kind of a... Uh, Stallone's a, a, a fantasy about what could have happened. I mean, and, uh... It's about three brothers who are struggling to get out of the Hell's Kitchen and you know, moved to Miami. I play a drunk piano player. How did they ever figure that one out? I don't know, nothing to it. <laughs> so you're writing a couple songs that are actually going to act in the film. Yeah, I was kind of walking on eggshells. I'm already done. And oh, it's, it's whole, in the can. whole new world for me. But I, you know, I think I did all right. I could see you in films. Yeah. Yeah, Do you, can you see yourself going into that sort of direction? Is it? I don't know how much I'm, uh, leading man. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can see that. There's a little Richard Dreyfus in there. <laughs> there could be. Oh, you know, Richard. <laughs> Behind the 
behind the tide over there. I, I don't really know if I'm what the woman of today wants and, and needs. I think you're in. <laughs> what if that's true, though? I mean, think about that. What if we've created a world where you're the guy the woman of today wants? <laughs> well, I don't have that. No, no I'll say I, have, I have visitors here at night. You really find out who your friends are, don't you? Oh, yeah, I, I do all right. Start playing chords. I mean, it's old trite. How do you write stuff? I really hate it. Uh, but you're at the piano. I feel so much like I'm in with Hoagie Carmichael. Yeah, I mean, how do you, you know sit down and write? Recording-wise, she's Maybe, great. Yeah, you you guys it. work great together. I'd like to. Uh, we were on stage once uh, at the Troubadour. We did a thing on stage. And I wrote that tune called I Never Talk to Strangers. And we did as a, a duet with kind of a baby, it's cold outside yeah. sort of flavor that I really like. Yeah, that was great. That was so, a great piece you did. I think that. maybe we'll, uh, we may do something in the future. Huh? Uh, she's doing a film right now. So I... You're one of the few artists uh, in the commercial field that I've ever heard of that went uh, two track directly to the tape oh, or to yeah, disc, yeah. right? Right to disc, without any of that. Well, not to the disc, but we cut, we, we cut the whole thing live two track in the studio. It's like, um, so there's that no multi-track, no overdubbing at all. So I get a, a performance in the studio. With an orchestra and the whole thing. Yeah, I stood in the studio uh, for the last album in the middle of the studio with like uh, 52, uh, Musicians, you know, it's very exciting. How wonderful! It's like Sinatra. I mean, you're, <laughs> there it is. You want the concert way? He did it his way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! Oh, well, you know. Magic of film. <laughs> Red. I'm 
Mustang with a bust of convertibles on top. Another liquid tattoo. I'm turned to gunmetal blue. Scrolled across the shoulders of a dying town. Took the one-eyed jacks across the railroad tracks. The scar on his belly pulled a stranger passing through. He's just a juvenile delinquent. He never learned how to behave. Oh, but the cops never think to look. Out in burn. like Farley Granger. He had his hair slicked back. She said, I'm a sucker for a fellow who wears a cowboy hat. She said, how far are you going? He said, baby, that depends on what you mean. Honey, I'm only stopping here to get me some gasoline. He said, I guess I'm going that way just as long as I guess you'd say I'm on my way out to burn shame. So with her knees up on the glove compartment, she took out her barrettes. And her hair spilled out like root beer, and she popped her gum and arched her back. She said, hey, man, Marysville don't amount to nothing but a wide spot in the road. Some nights my heart pounds like thunder. I don't know why I don't explode. Don't you see everyone in this stinking town? It's got one foot in the grave. And I'd rather take my chances out in Barbershane. He said, baby, Presley's what I go by. Why don't you change the station, count the grain elevators in the rearview mirror? She said, Miss, anywhere you point this thing, it's got to beat the hell out of the sting of going to bed with every dream that's going to die here every morning. So drill me a hole with a barber pole. I'm gonna be jumping my parole just like a fugitive tonight. Why don't you have another swig? Pass that car if you're so brave. I gotta get there before the sun comes up. Oh, shave. And the spider web crack and the Mustang scream. The smoke from the tires and the twisted machine. Just a nickel's worth of dreams. Just about every wishbone that they saved lies swindled from them on the way to burn shave. And the sun hit the derrick and cast a bat wing shadow. Up against the corridor on the shotgun side. And as they pulled her out from the wreck, you know, she still had on her shades. They say the dreams are growing wild. Just this side of Pearl Shade. Tom Waits, thank you, Thank Tom. you. Good night. And good night.